or lemon is the king. Here we grow also mandarin, oranges, peaches, apricots, walnuts, hazelnuts, cherries, sour cherry, olifix, and grapes. It's a tutti frutti farm. <laughs> <laughs> it's all great mixed together. Not that they have it selected. Every single place of Ghana is used to grow something. It's a fruity land and a good soil. So here we produce the wine. You smell oxide? Yeah. No, it's the week. Eh? We're making it this week now. And also this week start together with the wine harvest, the olive harvest. But in this time, the only work to do is to open all these nets under every tree. You saw the nets, huh? Mm -hmm. Now he's starting to open them. And that means that here the farmer doesn't climb up immediately on a tree to pick a single olive from a tree or to shake that tree because it's dangerous. Here the olive trees are the highest and oldest trees. First he waits. After a month he climbs up, he cuts all the branches, and we from the four branches pick the olives up. But from the starting until the ending of the whole season, it takes two, three months, the farmer has to go out every day through his garden to take every olive fresh from the net out. Every four or five days, he brings them all to a cooperative where they work this for him. He waits and pays, and in two hours, he gets cold and first press the olive oil back. That is a virgin olive oil. It's a good type of oil. More than 70 years ago, these nets didn't exist. There was only one way to get out the olive from the gun when they fall down, and this was a hard work. This was done by women. Yes, the women had to go out every day in the garden, had to pick one by one every single olive by handful on the ground. That was bad work. Sometimes those are the children have by the work. When they picked a lot, they put there where you see the stone wheel. That was men's work to move the stone around. If they don't have an animal to move that stone, they push the stone for an hour. First, they crush the olives with a stone. After crush the olives there, they filled. Oh, what was crushed there? Here. This was like a filter. Inside lies the solid part, stone and skin. From here went the juice out. When they filled the filter, put every filter one and another under the press, they close the press, by hand they press it down. Not two hours, two days, step by step. The juice went in the round hole. And I say juice because it's not all oil, what we press up from our olive. Most is water, like in every fruit. Then stone and skin, and then the remaining part is oil. To give an idea of what we had last year here, we had for each 100 kilo of olives, 17% of olive oil, that was 17 liters. 38% was the solid part that is water. That changed every year. We get at five to 20% of oil out here, not more. So what happens in there? The juice, what was inside, started to separate. You know that oil is lighter than water. It raised up. Farmers get this oil from the top out and conserve the oil, and then you open another little second hole. If you, Judy, again, you can see from here. Yeah. Yes. You confirm that there's a hole in the hole. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> the farmer went on the other side to open the little hole from the other side, and all the water what was here went out through a tube, but not out immediately in the garden. It went in the cistern. They left it seven, eight months in the cistern, and they used this in the past again to watering the fruit trees in the summer. What they also used were all the rest in the filter, the stone and skin. A part was used to mix with soda, water, and oil and they bought up a soap to wash their clothes. And most was used in the oven to light a fire because it was pressed and dry, burns immediately up. Or to heat the house, it was used to bake some bread. To tell in simple words that they don't waste nothing. They recycle. But that's what my nonno, my grandfather, often told me. He said, Rosa, now you waste everything. But 70 years ago, with bad times, not times like now, we had it to waste nothing. Hans and McGillan, you're right, but you have to grab 12 children, I have only one. <laughs> <laughs> know that this is not an excuse, but the times and the families are changed. In the past, they had big farm families, so the children have other harvests. Now we have not more than one or two kids. They play with PlayStation and computers. <laughs> 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 you can walk out that way, you can turn left, you will meet again, right children.